Hi there everyone, this is a video focusing on Module 4, Producing Traditional In-Between Drawings. We'll be focusing in detail the materials, tools, and equipment necessary for producing traditional in-between drawings, the timing chart, steps in in-betweening, and concepts in in-betweening. There will be separate videos on the 12 principles of animation and the animation workflow, so please stay tuned for that. Before we begin, we have to first define what in-betweening is. This is the process in the production stage wherein the intermediate frames in between two keyframes are created. This is one of the more crucial parts in the animation workflow as without it, then the actions would not be as smooth as one would want to, almost looking robotic. This is also one of the more labor-intensive processes. As the in-betweeners, the people responsible for doing the in-betweening, makes up most of the animation studio population, together with the cleanup artists. We need to know the things necessary for us to do traditional in-betweening. Traditionally, we use a professional light box like these, which would have a translucent rotatable disc with an LED light underneath and a peg bar. However, due to circumstances in this video, I will be demonstrating traditional in-betweening using this acrylic light box which is mainly used for tracing, but would be sufficient enough should you own one of these. When using the professional light box, we would also use an animation paper with specialized holes to fit the peg bar. But for this video, I will be using a normal bond paper which will be attached to the light box through the use of masking tape. Be careful when taking this off as well. For the pencil, it is best to use a non-photo pencil so that the same paper can be used for doing cleanup as discussed in the previous module on producing traditional cleanup key drawings. Another important piece of equipment is the line tester. This is a device that captures rough drawings and plays them back. The easiest way to do this is by placing a webcam to a stand which is then connected to a computer with line tester software. The line tester software that we use is Flipbook, which allows for easier capturing and replay. The importance of a timing chart is that this would dictate how the action should be to the in-betweener. By doing so, it would make the actions more organized and uniform, which gives the illusion that this entire animation is done by only one person and their style. There are many ways on how a timing chart is written, which can depend on the animation studio that you work with, one of which is how you read the charts. Most timing charts would be written vertically, read from top to bottom, but some would be from bottom to top. It could also be written horizontally, read from left to right, or vice versa. The lines could also be drawn either in a straight line or wavy, which is what we will be using for this lesson. Further, the frames can be written either as a number only or with a letter, the letter signifying the scene number. The numbers can also be written in multiples of 1, 2, 3, or combination. This would reflect if an action should be animated in 1s, 2s, or 3s. To make the spacing easier, curved lines would connect other lines to indicate same distanced frames. A time chart would somewhat look like this. It would have a long line connecting these two circles, called the keyframes or extremes. This would be the main parts of the action, and you will have to draw the frames in between these two keyframes. The letters or numbers placed with the line dashes on the long line is called the in-betweens. These are the frames that need animating. The distances between them would indicate the timing or speed of the action. There is also a specialized in-between called the breakdown. This is located at the middlemost part of the timing, which can be used as a kind of keyframes to break down a timing chart with a lot of in-betweens. It is indicated by a letter and or number placed inside a triangle. Before ending with the time charts, there is a need to explain two concepts, the methods of timing and two main types of timing charts. A typical animation would have a typical frame rate of 24 frames per second. That would mean that for you to create one second of animation, you would need to have 24 individual continuous drawings to give the illusion of movement. However, 
with the passage of time and the development of different techniques, we now have different methods of how we time an animation based on the number of drawings it would take to make one second of animation. The earliest method of timing is what we call the once. This would need 24 drawings to create one second of animation, making it one of the smoothest ways amongst other methods of timing. This is recommended if you are creating high-paced scenes to create that seamless movement. This method has also been popularized by a lot of older Disney films, but this is still seen today even in 2D and 3D animation. The twos is the most common method of timing. Instead of stretching out an action to 24 drawings, the twos divides that, which means that you would need 12 drawings in order to create one second of animation. As such, it would give a less smooth movement compared to its predecessor, but it's usually offset with the introduction of animation blurs. It has been popularized by Looney Tunes and a lot of animation studios post-World War II, and now is the most common method of timing for a lot of modern animations. Threes would simply mean that you need 8 drawings in order to create 1 second of animation. This is usually seen in Japanese animation, due to high demand but lower budgets. This would also explain why a lot of Japanese animation would have some choppy movement and would overuse either animation blurs for fight scenes or would have long overdrawn close-ups with little to no movement. There are also two main timing charts based from the spacing of the in-betweens. However, it is possible to have a combination of these two into one timing chart. Thirds is the term for when the keyframes and the in-betweens are evenly spaced amongst each other. This even spacing means that there is a constant speed. Some applications for thirds is the walk cycle, run cycle, wave and whip, and basically anything that you would do while maintaining a rhythmic and constant speed. Favors is the term for when the keyframes and the in-betweens are not evenly spaced between each other. If the frames are a distance closely to each other, then that would mean that the action is slower. If the frames are distance farther from each other, then that would mean that the action is faster. This would show acceleration or slow in, where there are more drawings at the beginning, deceleration or slow out, where there are more drawings at the end, or slow in and slow out which would mean that there are more drawings at the start and end compared to the middle. Most actions would use a favors type of timing chart as this would emphasize and exaggerate the action, making it more visually interesting. Specific applications would be the bouncing ball, jump cycles, facial expressions, amongst others. When producing traditional in-between drawings, would follow around 10 major steps, from placing your frames on the light box to submitting it. The first step is called pegging, which is the process of securing the animation papers to the light box through the use of pegs. Normally, the peg would be placed at the bottom for easier rolling. Without the peg, it is recommended that the use of masking tape at the bottom of the page would be next best. You need three pieces of paper. The first keyframe is placed at the very bottom, followed by the last keyframe, and a clean sheet of paper placed at the top. Make sure that they are aligned properly and secured so that any shifting would not mean readjusting your drawings. The second step is analysis. One must analyze the timing charts including the breakdown frame, action, and modeling before beginning. You can do this by rolling or flipping the first and last keyframes to understand the action. One must also check the special instructions given by the senior animator. If you think there are any mistakes, report to the production assistant or department head to discuss these. Another important part of this step is to make sure that you have mastered the modeling of this character. Try to redraw the keyframes before moving on with the actual in-betweening. The third step is determining how you're going to do the in-betweening. It is best to use the pose-to-pose -pose animation as opposed to the straight-ahead approach as it helps you create much more successful animations by determining the actions based from the preceding and succeeding frames. Based from the time chart, do the breakdown frame first, 
then draw the in-between between the first frame and the breakdown, and so on, and then draw the breakdown frame to the last frame until all necessary in-betweens are drawn. The fourth step is on plotting. To do this, turn on your light box to see all of the two frames under. Using the clean sheet of paper at the topmost part of the frames, lightly determine the placements of where the head is, and then create a line connecting them, making it curved in the process. This is called the line of action, and would usually apply the arc as a principle. Afterwards, find the midpoint of that line. This would help you determine where you should draw the head. Do the same for all of the other actions like the limbs, torso, and secondary actions like hair and clothing. It is possible for you to create a path of action that is straight, but that would warrant the action less impactful than it was for the path of action if it was curved. Afterwards is the in-between proper. This is the actual process of drawing the in-between. The in-between is based from the midpoint distance, view, turn, proportions, sizing, and volume of the first and last keyframe. In this example, since the first keyframe is facing towards the left and the last keyframe is facing towards the right, when doing the motion yourself, you would notice that the midpoint of that is facing front. The nose is visible for both of the keyframes, but it's not as pronounced in the in-between due to how it's facing front. If doing facial expressions, then the squash and the stretch might be something that must be taken note of. When doing in-betweens, there's no specific way of how to do it. It would be based on a lot of factors and how you would want the action to present itself. Sometimes, going out of the rules that was created would be necessary to achieve a much more impactful result. The advice for in-betweening really is to observe. Do a lot of real-life observation and see how people move and interact with the objects around them. See their quirks and what makes their movement special. Watch animated shows and pause frame by frame to see how they were able to achieve those types of movements. In-betweeners aren't really asked to be the best artists, but they should have a good idea of how movement works. Further. In-betweeners are not expected to create perfectly rendered drawings, but they are recommended to make sure that the actions that they are doing are clear enough as not to confuse the cleanup artist. There is no need to add details, but make sure that you are adding enough to give the cleanup artist a good idea to bring in the entire picture. Take note of the 12 principles of animation and other concepts of in-betweening, which is later explained in this video. One of the more important concepts of in-betweening is the sixth step, separation. This is the process of separating the moving objects from the non-moving objects. The moving objects like the head, eyes, mouth, and hair are drawn first. Then, the non-moving parts like the shoulders and torso are simply traced later on. Every now and then, it is also recommended that one do initial checking through the use of rolling which can be done without using the line tester. To do this, make sure that the bottom of the frames is secure to your light box. Keep your pinky finger as your leverage, keeping it free. Place the bottommost frame between your ring and middle finger, the middle frame between your index and middle finger, and the topmost frame between your index finger and thumb. To roll, separate your ring finger from your index finger, revealing the first keyframe then bring back your fingers together to show the breakdown frame, and then lifting your thumb and index finger to reveal the last keyframe. This takes a bit of practice, so try doing it slowly first. Until you're comfortable in doing so, rolling between frames a bit faster until you can see the animation. After you're finished with the in-betweening process, then it is time for step 8, unpegging. This is the process of removing the animation papers from the light box. This is typically done by taking the upper right corner and then dragging it towards the lower left portion carefully until the paper is removed from the pegs, if you are right-handed. For this example, the same motion is done but please be extra careful in removing the tape as not to snag any paper to the adhesive. The frames are then taken to the line testing 
which is the process of checking traditionally drawn frames prior to them being used in the final animation. This is done by taking photos through a webcam attached to a stand, which is then connected to a computer with line testing software. For other ways, you may use a scanner, albeit a bit slower, or through your mobile device, albeit it may not be aligned as it does not have a stand. Should there be any need for changes, then the in-betweening process must be done once more. The last step is submission, wherein one must check all of the materials from the scene folder, including the newly created rough in-betweens, are arranged and submitted to appropriate personnel. With that, that ends the lesson. I hope you were able to understand it. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask by dropping a comment below or through the use of our network of social media. Thank you so much. Please stay safe.